Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster here on this end. April 13th, 2024. It's about 10.33, 10.33 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity shows a 4.2 into the area of the Kuril Kamachaka Trench. We'll get to uh, this earthquake activity here in just a little bit. I want to cover some space weather activity here first, where we're watching a couple giant sunspot areas coming around the eastern limb. This is the old sunspot 3615, the culprit of many M flares. Last time it was out here on the earth facing side of the sun. Now it's coming around for a second visit. Not quite as complex. It's still uh, got a large coverage area out here. So we'll have to continue to watch it. A little central core here as well. A very active region up here on the northeastern limb. We're going to have to watch as well. Quite a few sunspots. Uh, to keep an eye on here in the days ahead in terms of flaring activity. Currently looking at a 99% chance for sea flare activity. M flare at 35 and X flare has been elevated to about 5% chance there. Currently uh, seeing a little bit of sea flare activity it looks like around the C2.2. We'll continue to watch all these regions as uh, some of them have uh, the potential there to produce some nice flare or some large flares. No major roars in the forecast. There is a little bit of uh, potential looks like the detailed forecast will be around 18 to 24 UTC time of April 14th and the current UTC time is April 14th around 0500 or so that's uh, so maybe tomorrow night we'll be looking at that in terms of the Aurora so we'll keep an eye on that not really expecting too much but uh, there is a possibility of the KP index being around the four to five level all right, earthquake activity out here. Here's that movement across the Kuril Kamachaka. Seeing a little bit of movement off the Kuril Islands region, 116 kilometers deep. Prior to that, we did see another earthquake just south here uh, for a 4.4 earlier this morning. So kind of keeping an eye on that region here. And, of course, there's that odd earthquake. Very odd because uh, of its location here proximity well away from the plate boundary and historical data tells us that uh, it's very rare uh, to see an earthquake out here in this area uh, it is off on the region where the Hawaii Islands used to be well kind of off of there you can kind of see where they uh, have been uh, where the Pacific plate has been uh, moving over this hot spot of course hawaii hot spot area throughout the millions and millions of years uh, of course a lot of weathering and whatnot has eroded these islands away but uh, it's kind of out there in that region where it has been in the past but uh, either way a little a little odd to see that earthquake out there all right a little swarming going on here outside of the philippines area once again a couple fives and some fours out here uh, roughly about 40 kilometers deep here at the northern edge of the Maluka Sea region. Further out and about here, looks like New Zealand seen a handful of earthquakes, including a four-pointer. Some deeper activity, it looks like, into the Kermadec Trench once again. We'll continue to keep an eye on this area. Haven't really seen too much adjustment ar around here. Just uh, the occasional three and occasional four-pointer, but uh, things have definitely been in motion out here across the plate boundary that New Zealand sits on. We'll definitely watch that. Latest activity, though, shows a 4.6 into the Kermadec Trench here, about 179 kilometers deep for that quake. Into the Big Island of Hawaii, small amount of movement offshore here, and the typical activity around the Pahala area. Not a whole lot changing up here across the Kilauea Volcano for now. Over here across the California region, the west coast, uh, really nothing showing up here in the last hour. Earlier today, we did see an earthquake there off of the San Jacinto Fault Zone in Southern California, 3.8. Uh, looks like that is about the only thing, aside from a three-pointer there, that's uh, in the 2.5 and above range. Aside from that, mostly smaller microquake activity out here today. Uh, San Andreas Fault here, the southern branch, pretty quiet. Across the creeping segment here, a handful of smaller quakes. And the Bay Area looks like most of this movement here, well, mixed back from yesterday and today. This area has seen a little bit of a, a uptick here in terms of the, the amount of earthquakes here around this uh, region of California. But um, nothing big coming up yet. 
Northern California, we've got one earthquake outside of the um, Manton area. This is that region that's seen uh, some earthquake activity. Has it been over a week? Let's see. Let me bring up last 30 days or so. Okay, so that's actually north of the area that's seen that four-pointer here recently. We had a couple four-pointers in the last couple weeks. Uh, a little odd one here off around the, um, well, it's a ways away from Mount Lassen here, but it's about 10 kilometers deep around this area. It's kind of a strange earthquake there, but uh, aside from that, really nothing major going on. Into the Mount Rainier area, looks like a 2.2 and a 1.8. This 2.2 coming in just on the western side here of Mount Rainier, but at, at about 11 kilometers deep. So it doesn't look like that um, uh, is associated with the uh, volcano, possibly, but that's a uh, fairly deep earthquake. Tremor map tonight shows 222 epi epicenters of Tremor pretty much confined to one single area here that's a a decent amount of trimmer and uh in a odd location not really odd but uh, uh for the most part when we see this trimmer activity it can be on any area up here across the uh, cascadia but um i'm trying to think of the last time i've seen a uh, a decent trimmer amount specifically in this zone Let's go back to last month here and look at the uh, trimmer count, see what we got. It's still not quite elevated compared to the years past. 222 on a single day. Yeah, that's a little uptick, but really nothing that would match previous years. Most of the activity has been here across the southern Oregon area or the coast range here of Oregon and into northern California. This would be the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. And uh, we've seen a, a handful of earthquakes out here recently into the, uh, the Pacific. Let's go back to the last 30 days. Uh, we had a decent amount of swarming out here in the Gorda Ridges with some uh, fairly moderate earthquakes, fives and, six, or fives and fours out here. And uh, it does look like things are straining out here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, obviously, trimmer is a sign of the two plates slowly uh, slipping past each other. That, that's why they call it a slow slip event. Uh, so we'll have to watch up shore here uh, within this region for maybe some uh, earthquake activity. We'll keep an eye on this here over the next 24 hours. Uh, one earthquake up in Canada. That's from early this morning, a 4.1. The area of Alaska, 4.1 up there as well, just outside the Anchorage area. Typical microquake movement up there around that area as well yellowstone national park not a whole lot showing up so let's just double check i have to make sure and uh let's see here doesn't look like a whole lot of earthquake activity out here at all just looking at these maps um they look, they look pretty quiet that's a good thing right we don't want to wake up that super volcano uh western texas area Quite a bit of earthquakes out here in the desert of Texas, out in the oil fields. Twos and ones are the magic number out there, it looks like. The rest of the country, nothing showing up here. Doesn't mean there isn't any. But normally on the weekends here, uh, the USGS tends to lack the reporting on the smaller quakes out here. But uh, really nothing showing up here on the map for now. Puerto Rico area, handful of quakes down there, twos and threes. The South America area looks like some movement stirring up down into the Argentina area, well underneath this region, 555 kilometers deep for a 4.5. Continue to watch this area upstream here for some further movement. Notice we got a 5.1 coming in here to the Atlantic Ocean being reported out here across the uh, Earthquake 3D globe, not yet on the USGS map. So we'll have to keep an eye on things out here. Last time we seen a whole bunch of earthquake activity out here, things started kicking up across the New Jersey area. Uh, we started seeing all that earthquake activity out there and uh, a whole lot of uh, interesting movement across the North American plate. So we'll, we'll definitely watch that. For now, though, just a 5.1 up into the area of Iceland. Let's check out the earthquake activity there as far as that map goes. 
Last 12 hours shows about 36 earthquakes. Uh, a big calm down compared to over the past couple days. We had seen a, a decent swarm activity out here across this region. The area of Grindavik here and the current ongoing activity. Well, let's go to the live from Iceland site. See what's going on here. Continued eruption, I bet. There you go. Um, no blockage below. Um, again, this is just an, a long duration event coming up on, I think, a almost a month time period here that the eruption has been uh, ongoing like this. That's the main or at least one active event, the big one. Let's see what we got here uh, for this webcam image from live from Iceland.is. Lava flow out here. Someone was mentioning recently, I seen it uh, in a comment, I think, on, on a video asking about uh they seen some fountaining going on out here across the area of the lava flow field and most of the time uh, that doesn't mean that there's a you know a new eruption or a new fissure out here that's basically uh these volcanic gases get trapped here and can ultimately create uh, a little explosive activity itself there by making a little bit of fountain uh fountaining uh, that's at least that's what I think it is. It doesn't look like we're currently seeing it. It was only for a short amount of time, but it would make sense that some of the uh, volcanic gas is getting trapped out there and um, eventually creating what looks like some type of fountaining going on in that lava field. But for now, we'll continue to watch it. Still an ongoing thing. All right, uh, what else we got? Anything major going on? A couple earthquakes down across the Antarctica area. Plate boundary here from uh, between Australia and Antarctica. Those earthquakes coming in last night and this morning. Doesn't look like there's anything else stirring up down there, but we'll continue to watch New Zealand. Uh, they've downgraded that 5.1 to a 4.9. That's the EMSC, but it does bounce around a lot with the EMSC. Eventually, they'll get a uh, definite mag magnitude. Nothing showing up here from the USGS yet. Look at that. I mean, this is just an out-of-place earthquake. Something odd going on out here. All right, uh, what else we got? Space Weather or uh, Storm Prediction Center. Still looking at Monday, folks. Potential for some severe weather out here in the typical tornado alley here of Oklahoma, northern Texas, and Kansas region. A huge area, though, slight risk. This is going to be a big severe weather outbreak here on Monday and overnight into Tuesday. Large to very large hail, damaging wind gusts, and a few tornadic storms are possible. We'll look at this tomorrow. This uh, will be updated tomorrow, and it will give us a, uh, a good indicator where most of the uh, severe potential will be. And that's all due to this low pressure system that has brought a cold, cloudy, rainy day here in my neck of the woods. That's going to scoot over and interact with the environment over there in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, yeah, and we'll definitely watch it. Uh, it looks a little bit less compared to a couple previous model runs here. But I still think it's got some severe potential there on Monday into Tuesday. That's a massive low pressure system. It's going to scoot off to the northeast or so. And as we head into next weekend, uh, looks like some type of system out here across the Texas area bringing in just general thunderstorm activity. Uh, the rest of the models here next, next week, Wednesday into Thursday, some type of weather pattern out here. But it's hard to say. That's a ways out. But uh, it does look like it will remain quite active out here across the uh, the states. All right, uh, what do we got here? Next five asteroids. Let's see if this is the next one or the latest one. I'm going to start doing this on on every nightly update here just to cover any close approaches. Uh, this is from the uh, jpl.nasa.gov site. Looks like we did have a couple. These aren't really super close calls, and these are not really huge asteroids either. 317 miles, 545,000 miles. Uh, you know, nothing as what we had seen here with the last asteroid that was about 10,000 miles that missed us. But uh, 
we'll continue to check back on it. It's kind of interesting to look at all this. And of course, if we see something of interest, we can click on it, look at some observations of the numbers, uh, the path of that asteroid and the interaction there with the Earth plane and see where and see how close that gets. There's a couple different uh, models. There's this one that the NASA uses and also the, the uh, NEO site near Earth object viewer, which is uh, pretty cool as well. But uh, for now, we're uh, looks like we're safe and sound, I hope. In the meantime, have a good night, everyone. We're going to get some sleep. Definitely uh, a little on the tired side today. We'll catch you guys back out here sometime tomorrow for the Sunday morning update. Seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on. Take care, folks. Stay safe out there.